welcome to Josh's House of Nerd podcast. Hello, Nerd Nation. I'm Josh, and I welcome you to the podcast. Grab a cold evergreen gobble of blue milk and make yourself comfortable here at my House of Nerd. Now for tonight's sponsor, your mom. Tonight, we're joined by John and Crit, as always, and we're talking about my pick, the 2013 movie by director Bong Joon-ho, starring Chris Evans, Tilda Swinton, Ed Harris, John Hurt, and Octavia Spencer. And it talks about the mo- the train Snowpiercer as it travels the globe spanning track carrying the last remnants of humanity after a failed attempt at climate engineering to stop global warming and has created uh has created a new snowball earth let's talk about that movie guys what did you think about snowpiercer which was my movie well it pierced snow effectively (laughs) i don't well i yeah it did blow up some really good uh some really good uh ice uh things that's what i kept thinking every time i'd see that happen when they would like blow up like this big ice drift i'm like i'm afraid to do that in my car why why do you think a big train could do that because it was overly engineered oh okay (laughs) yeah definitely um i so i I have to say i i absolutely love this director um kind of we seem to hit the directors almost always to, to begin with. And, and I think it's worth noting his other movies are um, the big ones are parasite and the host mm-hmm. um, fantastic movies and, and parasite, especially um, delves a little more into, you know, class differences. And if you haven't seen that one, absolutely recommend it. And I think you see a lot of not necessarily the evolution of ideas that Snowpiercer put out, but just another another representation of some of the same um, class you know class separation ideals that he 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 highlights and Snowpiercer highlights in his other film as well. Well, do you know if the if what he what he put into the film was from the French graphic novel? I don't know how much of it is from the French graphic novel or not. Because I think so I don't know. a lot of it is, but yeah. I yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but at the same time, I've never read it, so yeah. Well, it's in. Fact. I should, I should, uh, I should read it. Actually, you, you know what kind of blew my mind about this movie when I was reading about it a little bit. Um, it remains one of the most expensive Korean productions ever at forty million dollars, and stuff like that. And and you can see, I mean. I'll be honest. They did a lot with that forty million dollars. I mean, you can do a lot with forty million. That's a really high number. Well, but you see, I mean, when you compare it to a lot of these bigger like movies, you know, I think this was done super high quality, and it looked like a more expensive movie, even though it wasn't a more expensive movie. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Uh, yeah, but I I wonder at the same time because if you look. I don't think they had to use a ton of CGI on, on some of the outside scenes, obviously. Um, but there wasn't a massive amount in my Yeah, they mind. just drove through Canada, right? I mean, isn't that what Canada <laughs> They just went to Canada for the winter <laughs> That's right. and, and filmed it there. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but I, I mean, and, and a lot of the set pieces were a lot smaller. I mean, they were elaborate pieces, but no, I, I, I'm not necessarily as surprised. Um, but it's I'm I'm happy to have seen the the Korean film industry continue to to grow because I I've seen a lot of great movies come out of that that industry. There's been a lot of them. I mean, I love uh, the horror movie Train to Busan that's on Netflix that came through. That's one of my favorite horror movies. I think they did an excellent job with that. So there, I'm I'm real mm-hmm. excited to see the Korean market kind of come through and and seeing that you know the excellent movies that they can produce that's been kind of it's kind of left some of some people uh inaccessible to it because of language barriers and things like that and stuff i know i know there's subtitled stuff there's something but there's some people out there that just will never watch a subtitled movie and yeah even though i don't give a crap about it i, that's I not love us. just the movie what's that yeah i said that's not us no it's none of us yeah. here yeah <laughs> If the movie's Except for great, anime. It's great. I watch anime with, with uh, dubbed, horrible individual. Yes, I know. 
Okay. How dare you, uh, John? <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy it, I don't care. Yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, it, it, it's good. I and and just the just the idea. I, I don't know. It, it feels ambitious. If, if this is based on the, a comic, and I and I didn't realize it was based on a comic until this last rewatch. I mean, it's a that's a it's a pretty ambitious story mm-hmm. to bring to light in just a movie. No, um, I mean, well, you know, the it I I it is hard. The one thing that I think is very was probably I would say probably difficult about this movie is how close quarters it is in many many of the scenes, especially in the tail section. You know, it was very and I and I think they did a great job of making it feel very claustrophobic. Um, making it feel very dark and grimy and grim, um, you know, and I, I would have thought that would be a real tough, you know, as to film at, but as they move up, uh, you know, to different levels of each car, you know, it definitely opened up more and more. And they kind of, I, I did like that feeling though, as every car you moved up, it got a little bit lighter, a little bit more beautiful, you know, towards the, the head of the, uh, of the train. So, but I, I I thought it was filmed well. I guess is what I'm trying to say. In this kind of small space they had. And and speaking of that, where the crap did everybody live? I mean, they show that one little train car where that one lady's knitting. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I just kept thinking to myself, man, where are all these people like hold up? Well, that <laughs> that and like the the ravers. Like, I just have this idea that, uh, Ed Harris's character is just like, okay, you guys have to dance 24 seven till you drop, you know, and they never, never get to go do anything else. They're just constantly in the rave. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, this rave is essential to humanity. It can yeah, never pretty stop. much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, never stop. you must never stop or else you will die. And <laughs> right. You just can't have that here. Right. Um, That's funny. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a weird aesthetic. Yeah. Cause it's like uh, out of everything they don't have, they have a nightclub, <laughs> but well, I mean, they're, they're, if they've been on there for seventeen years, they have entertainment, right? Yes, yeah, so, and and if you watch, um, and and that's one thing I think the series does a better job of, simply because it has more time to do that with. Is it is it highlights living conditions? It highlights how that goes. It, it highlights you know actual artists that have come to popularity on the train. So I think Snowpiercer is, is kind of just it, it, the only real harm that's done by the film is just its runtime. Like it doesn't have all this time to explore this really super intriguing, not done before in movies, you know, con- I mean, it's been done before movies, but the Snowpiercer's train, you know, it's train survival. Nobody's done a train thing. So it's unique and new and everyone wants to know, okay, how does this work? How's this interesting? Mm-hmm. And so I think it has to walk a fine line in its timeline and in, 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 in its time amount of moving the plot along and being, you know, fun to watch and interesting to watch. And then at the same time, giving you enough tidbits of how the train works to keep you intrigued and, and interested without, you know, overplaying its hand. And that's hard to, that's, that's gotta be super hard to do. I would be, I would not be surprised if there are, you know, uh, every movie generates deleted scenes, of course, but I guarantee you there's a lot of cut, cut scenes here um, that, uh, that just explore different concepts that just maybe didn't fit in runtime. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I know, I know you're, you're glowing about this movie and, and definitely there's parts of this movie that are really interesting and stuff like that. But I always thought that every time I've watched it, that the plot is muddled. Like it's, it's not clear on what it's trying to say kind of. And also the ending, I didn't find very satisfying. I would agree. No, I'm, that tr- absolutely. I'm not glowing on the movie so much as the setting, the movie okay. itself. I, okay. I struggle like as with the plot, the, the series has a much more believable, much more, um, easy to easy to track uh, plot. Um, so well, but I mean the them, setting sorry, the settings from the graphic them. novel. Or it's like they didn't come up with that; they just adapted it. I'm, I'm yeah. not the story is actually a little different. I think uh, Bong Joon Ho took it in a different direction than like I think the from what I understand the actual graphic novel does uh, a very different. So it's like it's in the same. Uh, universe or world that the graphic novel takes place in but uh Bong the story Hill is kind of its own yeah it's kind of its own it kind of doesn't reflect yeah. what's in the graphic novels it's just the same setting 
So that's like, yeah, I think the, things that's like the setting is, is, is you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a nice setting. It's a good, interesting idea mm-hmm. to kind of put humanity in an in, in enclosed space. And then, you know, like any good sci-fi, um, basically, uh, what would it be like overemphasizes the differences so that, you know, it's easier to draw conclusions or, mm-hmm. you know, kind of tell the story and, and the lessons and stuff like that, that the story is trying to give. Um, I think it does a good job with that, but I also to feel like it's, it's a little muddled. Uh, it's not clear. And also there's some, it, I think you're right. There has to be a lot on the cutting room floor because there were just some, some blatant character changes, especially towards the end where it felt like it was just rushed. It was like, everything was just like, okay, we got to, yeah, the they're very, on yeah. board, but then they're not on board. Then, you know, it's like, it's like peop, characters make decisions that just maybe go, wait, that's not, I didn't feel like that's what the movie was set them up to be, you know, type stuff. So I don't know. Are you talking more like about what happened when they blew the train up all of a sudden? And then, well, I mean that too, it's like this, the blowing up of the train basically just killed what 90% of everybody that was on. Yeah. I mean, and so it's, I mean, I guess it's a, I guess from that point of view, it's a uh, kind of a dystopian ending. Right. But I mean, there's there's no way you're going to have enough people to restart the human race. And I mean, it's it's kind of a, an ending like, you know, he, he wants equality and all wants that. And he wants humanity to go on. But at at the very end, when they decide to 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 break the train, I just want to know what's going through his head at that moment. It's like, is it is he is he thinking, you know, it's better that we don't exist at all if we have to exist like this and it's just better that we're gone or does he have some screwed up notion that somehow that, you know, now we'll go back to living the way we're supposed to and, and get, get it through his head. I, I want to know his thought process in there. Cause to me, it's just like, you know, it, it kind of goes against your character. You're fighting for all this equality. So how do I make everyone equal? Let's stop the train and kill everyone. Uh, I, I, I didn't quite grasp his ending there. Well, yeah. It wasn't and- even, uh, it wasn't even like Chris Evans's intent to blow up the train it's, it was that Korean guys the whole time. And even Chris Evans was against it though. I think I would have liked it better if they would have pursued more of the idea of him having to choose between being the conductor of the train uh, mm-hmm. and running the train versus him just freaking out in the end and, and just saying, blow it up, you know? Yeah. It's, it's definitely one of the things that I, th- I think they were trying to get to, which is, uh, when he sacrificed his friend earlier to basically mm-hmm. grab uh, the lady and uh, that he's willing to let some people die in order for everyone else to, to basically either one or two ways, let some people die um, in order to get what he wants and, or let some people die in order to seek humanity's kind of betterment. Um but the problem is that's exactly the same as Ed Harris's character, the conductor, because it's exactly. just like, yeah, he's he's doing the same thing. I mean, it's 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 just it's unfortunate and, he's in the bad part. Like the the only reason it feels like Chris Evans is fighting is because he's in the part that's going to die. If he wasn't in the part that's going to die, would he have the same issue? Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's that's kind of the whole thing, and it, it felt like like that's why I felt the end was rushed because, like he stands in the tube that's supposed to be the engine. And then suddenly he's, you know, maybe contemplating this, but it's, I don't know. It, it, that's too soon. Like that doesn't, it's not impactful enough. It feels like to just stand, you know, next to the engine and, you know, suddenly contemplate all these things. Like, I, I don't it's know like, if the oh, movie maybe really communicated yeah. this well. I, mean, I, I think they tried to do what they could with, with the material, but I don't think the movie itself, you know, the, the combination of everything that was on screen really conveyed why this person would even consider, you know, this yeah. as a thing. You know, I kind of had to make my, my own thought up when I was watching that. Cause my thought was, you know, if I was put in that situation, it would be hard to say no to it because you'd want to try to try to make it better yourself, try to do something different than what's already been being delved out to people. And, and that would be, that would be enticing. That would be, that would be hard, something hard. And I'm not saying he could most likely he wouldn't be able to yeah, do something different, what, but it would be everybody but 18, that opportunity. Yeah. Everybody from, but 18 from his, uh, part of the train are dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's pretty rough. 
but it would it would be hard to, to not at, try. Well, and at that point, like, okay, the damage is done. They're already dead. So it's like, okay, maybe I can make a difference. So it's yeah. that's I guess interesting. I can kind of see it, but I, I'd go the different the direction. Time, I'd be like, yeah. this, we first of all, it's all based around this idea that the only people left alive are the people on the train. Like that's possible, but you mm-hmm. don't know that. Correct. You don't know that. You've been stuck on this train for 17 years, traveling at high speed around the world. That's just, that, that's not enough information to know that the rest of humanity is actually gone. You know? Uh, I mean, the thought crossed my head. There could be people living that went underground. There's people that. Yeah. I mean, lots if, of different scenarios, you know? Right. Right. So that's one thing. The second thing mm-hmm. is if this is the best we can do, then maybe it isn't worth humanity surviving this way. Yeah. You know, is survival enough when survival means eating kids, you know? And and that's why I wanted to like look in the, inside that guy's head at that moment if that's what he was thinking. Right. If that's what he was like, uh, well, you know, screw this. We just apparently don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's I think like I said, I think that I, I kind of wish the movie could have given us that somehow. Flashbacks mm-hmm. or somehow connect the entire story together with his decision uh use cinematography and you know the art of movie making to let the audience be in his head somehow in an interesting way because that's the pivotal part of the movie or at least it should be but it kind of isn't because it's muddled by the whole you know uh breaking open of the train like so if they kept it all about the train's ecosystem and didn't have the kind of well actually i want to break down gates and you know this door to the outside is another gate. And so I'm going to blow it open. They didn't have this side plot, uh, which again felt I th- forced. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think the whole thing might've been a little more cohesive. Like mm-hmm. it would have felt a little more like, okay, there's a, there's, there's the beginning and then there's the ending. Right. And the real, the real kind of crux of the movie felt like, do we end up in the same situation we were at the beginning, just with a different, different names? Yeah. You know, and and I think that that would have been a tighter story than what we got because we got this kind of whole side plot uh, that really is in and of itself interesting, not as interesting as the uh, the the kind of demographics and class layout of the train itself, but is interesting in and of itself. Like that could be a another movie or a movie afterwards or another story that could be told about this idea of what you've been told that you can't survive outside. There's an indoctrination that's happening and the truth that you actually, you might be able to, you know, and so there actually is nothing. So that's a different story. And I think putting, combining those both together, I don't know. Like I said, I think it just muddled, muddied the waters. That that's why I think it, this, this story, this particular story or, and, and, and setting and the information they're trying to portray and the messages they're trying to send, I guess, I uh, just, I think they fit better either in, you know, the comic series for one, obviously where it came from, and then a TV series. In my mind nowadays, if I'm recommending Snowpiercer the movie to someone, it's as a hook to get them interested in Snowpiercer the series, because I feel like the, the runtime lets us, ha- has let us explore those questions at a deeper level. Um, and I, I think a lot of it just comes down to, to, to runtime, unfortunately, I just I can't think of of those problems not being able to be solved by simply having more content that highlighted these problems, and then you know giving us more character develop over a longer period of time to where that that ending decision doesn't feel rushed anymore. John, have you seen the entire series? I haven't seen any of this series. Have you seen it the whole f- first season? Because I know they're coming. Out uh, the I'm season. I'm I'm on the f- the finale of the first season. I'm mm-hmm. scared to watch the finale because I care about all the characters. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and so I I don't want to go in and be like, crap! It's Game of Thrones on a train <laughs> and watch yeah. everyone die. <laughs> um, but I I absolutely love the series, and uh, you know it's a, a a shameless plug for it, but. It's got fantastic actors. And that Dubby was on Diggs HBO is... Max as well, right? Yeah, it's on HBO Max, but it's a TNT show. Um, and they just started season two. They're releasing episodes there. So um, I think Sean, uh, Sean Bean's in season two. So it's just like fantastic show. Highly recommend. This is our advertisement for it. We better get some, some sponsorships. <laughs> back. I was going to say, I thought we were talking about the movie. <laughs> uh, like, right. like I said, if, if I recommend the movie to anyone anymore, it's a... 
it's 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 like the first hit of cocaine like if you liked this oh, <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> come join us come see me again yeah <laughs> So how do you think they handled the whole class system thing? Like, you know, the different classes, the different cars uh, going through this. I don't think this, it was you know? explored enough. What's that? I, I think it, I think it was set up, but I don't think it was explored enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I was like, like you were saying, like, where did they live? You know what? They showed different environments per car, mm-hmm. but like, that's, that's interesting while you're watching it, but it doesn't stick with you. And then they jumped almost straight from, the tail class to first class. It was almost like a straight. Yeah. We're going from the ultra poor in the tail to the ultra rich. I mean, unless all the ax guys are the middle class. Yeah. And I guess that's like your only (laughs) real introduction to them. Yeah. It was weird. There was like an entire ax guys. And then for one car and then another car is completely just for water processing. And then a whole other car, even though there's a ton of people and you don't see where the living space is, but an entire other car is for education. Well, I'm, they just have a lot of cars they can't show, and I wish they would have done something more to highlight the actual length of the train so you could at least kind of suspend disbelief a little bit. Yeah, the That's, only time they get that is the shoot-off between the, the cars, which I, uh, I thought point. they spent too much time on. Like, I, I understand yeah, it was a like cool they had this piece, cool shot. Yeah, they yeah, had this like, cool We have idea. this really cool shot we want to do. And it's the same thing with the <laughs> it's the same thing with the axe guys and the and the tunnel and stuff like that. It's like it, yeah. they have this ideas, these set piece ideas, and mm-hmm. they're just trying to get to them. And there's not like yeah. I really like the the initial like you know rolling the the barrels connected together to get the first couple of doors open. You've got four seconds to get through. Like that was interesting because there was a yes. build up to it and there was kind of a payoff. But like for the rest of the transitions through the the uh, the train the train cars, it felt I guess it felt rushed. I guess that's what it comes yeah, down to is that absolutely. there's you know, the only time you get it kind of the idea of how big this train is, how many cars there are is when they're doing that shootout, when they have kind of the look around the curve and everything. But like I said, I, I, I don't. Yeah. It, it seems to be the running theme of this movie. Is it's like, I, it rushed. doesn't stick with you afterwards. Like, it's just like, Oh, that's kind of cool in the moment. But afterwards I'm not like think it's not making me think about yeah. it's like how I, it would I'd be love- to live in this environment. I'd love to explore more that cult mentality they have when they, you know, get, they get to you to the schools, the school car and they like basically worship Wilbur. I mean, it's like, you know, the great conductor and they all do the symbol. And I mean, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like they had this cult thing and it's like, ah, oh, it'd be interesting to explore this more and nope, let's get to the cool set piece instead. And I was just like, okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. It'd, it'd be an interesting, <laughs> like this war is mine style video game. Yeah. Oh man, that that game. Uh, it would be, because um, it it'd be like you you'd be hopefully in your own head, confronting mm-hmm. your own choices in those situations. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. No. What would I do in this situation if I have this massive train that I had perfected down, and we have you know, two hundred and fifty extra passengers that I never thought about doing? Like, how would I handle that in order to maintain a train? Like. I, you'd hope that you could confront your stuff, but you just don't get it here as much. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's a like a like you said, it's it's a nice introduction to this world and this idea. Um, but I think it doesn't for me. It doesn't really stand on its own very well. No, but I, with a few tweaks, I could guess it could be, and that's I guess that's where the series would come in. They can pr- do some of those like little repairs and stuff that. Maybe they just couldn't do in a two hour runtime. You know, may, yeah. sometimes some movies or, or books or, or I, I really books think are it's just too big to put on into a movie. I, you know, I, well, I don't know. I think it's a bloated plot. I, I actually think there's too much in the plot for the for the setting. Like okay. if they had pulled out more from the plot and focused on telling one story, like you, you can get away with not showing every car, right? Absolutely. Um, but if you take out certain parts of it and you really like maybe explore the class divides, you know, using the train as a metaphor and everything. And, and you focus, you highly focus on them being exposed to, you know, how the other side lives. Cause you don't really get all, cause I guess so many action set pieces in this system that you, in the show that you don't, you don't get to see that type of stuff. And that's kind of the stuff that would stick with you afterwards. Like the action pieces were actually 
pretty cool. And there were some great shots in it. There's some really good stunt work and interesting cinematography. But it's not, I don't know. I never got the sense that this was an action movie, right? Because the plot is too interesting. It, it's too it, it's too in the foreground. Do you think you know? he was trying to blend too much of, trying to make this drama too much of an action movie? I think so. I, 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 think there, I think there was a chance to spend this money on this movie mm-hmm. and maybe try to make this movie everything to everybody, kind of Chinese style. You know, Chinese movies, at least used to, tend to be, you know, they'll have comedy, they'll have drama, they'll have romance, they'll have action. They stick everything into the movie. And the, the idea that I heard was that because most people in China don't go and see movies a whole lot, at least not as much as we do here in the West. Well, if you watch the, so Wandering, because of that, Earth, the Wandering Earth that way. Yeah. So if, if, if you're going to make a movie, you make a movie with all of the uh, genres in it. So that when that one person, you know, that person goes and sees a movie once a year, they get all of it in one big movie. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's more entertaining and more memorable because of that. You kind of get everything from it as opposed to kind of more hyper-focused movies. So it's kind of feel like with, with Snowpiercer is that it kind of takes a similar idea in that it's a sci-fi sort of, and it's post-apocalyptic. And then it's got this interesting idea with this technology and this train and the train representing class and then the different cars being different classes and kind of transitioning from the lowest class to the highest class, but then drops a lot of that on the floor that they could have explored maybe um, by having action set pieces and, you know, all of these different uh, subplots going on that don't necessarily help with the class mentality. You know, it doesn't help tell the story about class and, Oh, maybe they, maybe to them, class wasn't the main focus behind the story. It's just kind of one of those things like the, the sci-fi aspect of it that's just in the background. They didn't really want to explore it, but that's kind of what I wanted to get out of it. I, I actually did too. I mean, I do love this, the sci-fi, the sci-fi aesthetic, you know, the, the premise of it all, but great science fiction has a premise in a, a science fiction world but great science fiction usually delves into these, those deeper subjects. Yeah. And and yeah. that's what in my mind is true, wonderful, great science fiction. Yep. You know, Agreed. and if, and when you don't get into that, that real inner, inner thinking of, of people or a plot, and it's just very on the surface, just for action, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's all, all sorts of fun sci-fi movies out there that are just very surface level. But the great ones are the ones that delve deep. Yeah, and it, it, I think that's what it comes down to. Is it just leaves me wanting more, but not in a good way. Yeah, it, it leaves me wanting to have them t- retell the story, but focus on a, on the sci fi aspect of it, which is this exploration of class, mm-hmm. which is something that that you know, like you were saying, sci fi does it. It uh, exaggerates. Uh, these kind of our current society societal issues in a fantastical situation in the far future or some future, and then allows us to be like, Oh, they're actually talking about racism or mm-hmm. sexism or uh, class, but they're doing it in such a highly contrasted way. It's easy to kind of get some nuance in there in, in, in that type of thing that might stick with you afterwards and make you think about the situation and, and kind of empathize, put yourself in there and maybe come up with an uh, with your own ideas about how you would handle those situations. I mean, some and of the some really... greatest Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica, the new series episodes, are be, you know delve into those really deep. Yeah, it's in space and all that stuff, but you know they really dig deep into the the subject matter, and you know, and, and that's really what true wonderful science fiction is. Yeah, and and so like if. Yeah. So th- that's just what it comes down to is, is that I don't, I, I enjoy the movie. It's not a bad movie. It's not like hard to watch or anything. Um, it, it'll keep my attention through the whole thing, but it always leaves, every time I've watched it, I've always gone, you know, I've always started this, this show and I don't watch it very often, but I always start the movie with like a, this is going to be cool. I'm going to pull something out of this. I didn't see previously. And every time I get to the end of it, I go, no, that's pretty much what it was last time too. And there's nothing like, there's more interesting things happening in my head that I'd want them to do than what was actually put on the screen. 
Well, and it feels like it's going there. You know, that's, that's yeah. I think the part that I, even though I do enjoy this movie a lot, which is why it's on this list, um, I I feel like it just it, it definitely had a direction and it just didn't make it there. So you you think it's gonna go there, and then he hit the end, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, it just it just fell short. Yeah, because honestly, and, and- I get I feel left empty with that ending when they just end on that lady out in the still field. Yeah, uh, it's I, I don't know if that's supposed to be hopeful. It is not uh, from my point of view. Yay, they escaped into nothing. And and the <laughs> and so, you know, the snow is melting. I'm like, yeah, but there's still snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I think you'd want to wait a little bit longer for it to melt. A little there bit was more there was no hope at the end of that one. It's like, oh, OK, thanks, guys. I, I, I appreciate that for her. <laughs> You know, getting my hopes up and then nothing happening. I mean, Ed Harris died. That's kind of the only cool thing. It's like, oh, hey, this horrible person who's probably maybe not that entirely horrible got killed. And, uh, oh, uh, the, the human race is probably dead. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, By the way, I, I don't know. I think I, oh, go ahead. I think Ed Harris actually is terrible. Uh, the character, not him, not the actor. <laughs> no, I, 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 I do as well. But oh, okay. I think the movie tries to it wants to attempt to cast him in a different light. For it's trying to justify him or, or play devil's advocate for well, that, just a minute. Well, and that, no, that that's what I mean by the kind of like this intellectual blue balls that happen yeah. uh, is that yeah. he does represent like a, the need, the kind of the needs of the train are more important than any individual needs. Like that's kind of where he's coming at it from. I mean, he's, not a very sympathetic character. You can't really put yourself in his shoes because he's so calloused. But at the same time, that's an interesting premise. Okay, if you were put in the situation where you got to basically lock kids up in cabinets and everything, see, that's the problem, right? It's like, even if you thought of that, even if you thought like, okay, these spaces to work on these things, only kids can get to them. There are hundreds, if not thousands of different ways to structure society in order for kids to do the work, but not be mindless slaves to it. Or mm-hmm. stuck down there forever. Yeah. Like there are other ways to solve also, this. It seems a little bit like a design oversight. <laughs> yeah. Well, he <laughs> let's he make kind it of, so Oompa Loompas can run our train. No, he, he kind of mentioned it. He's like this this the part that broke down there wasn't intended to run forever, and there's no manufacturing for it. It ran out a long time ago, yeah. um, and so like the kids are an improv improvisation, uh, and. You can, I, like I said, you can get the hints of it, right? Like you could put it together and go, okay, uh, Ed Harris didn't want the extra people that were on the back of the train when it first started up, right? But he's now making uh, use. He of left them. them to starve to death until he had a problem that could be solved with their breeding. Mm-hmm. And then because of that, it solves a problem that he f- may either foresaw or oh, he had to foresee because it would take, you know, five years of growth before you had someone that could had the mechanical capabilities, but also the smallness to be able to fit into these spaces and fix stuff. Like it's, there's, there's interesting things there. It's just not explored. Like where in the crap are they getting all those bugs to feed those people? Uh, you can, <laughs> are you they can breed them. Yeah. You can breed them. You think you're breeding them? Yeah, well, well I think they kind of gave the impression that they had like a basically a big ram scoop on the top of the train for 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 just a second. I'm like, wait, if the world's frozen, how are they getting bugs from outside? Like, they're not. Yeah, the ram scoop is for water. But that was that was okay. Yeah, but that was kind of the impression it gave to me at the oh. first watch was they've just got basically this big scoop on top of the train and they're just feeding whatever you know comes out of it. I didn't even think about the insect breeding until you know much later. <laughs> yeah, it it has to be insect breeding because it, if it's as cold, if it's cold enough where yeah, people can't freeze. live outside, there are no insects that are going to live in that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, my brain works weird, I guess, that way. I looked at those bugs the first time. They're like, where in the crap are they getting all of those? I was the yeah, first the, thing I thought of. I mean, they've got all that fish and stuff. They've got enough room to to breed crickets, tons and tons of crickets, or whatever those were. I thought they were crickets. And where's opinion. the chicken coming from and the pork and the and the cow, you know, the beef? Because they had all of yeah. that and a lot of it. Uh, maybe not a lot of it. But I'll... I'll yeah. There was a, we only saw a couple of stakes at the end in Ed Harris. Well, section. and then... But I'm sure that's what the other cars I'm were trying, not seeing. 
Well, we're not I'm sure. Trying, that's I'm trying true. not to mix up the series and the sh- and the yeah, don't, movie. don't yeah. <laughs> um, but from what I understand, at least in one part of the movie, they're talking about how they only get at a certain time of year. The sushi, yeah. the fish, yeah, yeah the, the sushi. Yeah, the when they're doing the sushi, and they have to keep this balance. So I, I'm assuming it's probably the same way with a lot of things, where it's yeah. a, you know, a very timed over a year. There's only so much to go around. Mm-hmm. And they very tightly control it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a whole point. Like the, the the aquarium is a closed ecosystem. They can only pull fish from once or twice a year, uh, which is supposed to, I think, supposed to be reflective. And they even, you know, Ed Harris says it later, the train itself is an ecosystem that can only support so many people. You know, you, you, you can't, you can, you can basically outpopulate the space really easily. And so he's come up with the most brutal and worst way possible. You know, it's like there there are other ways to curtail, you know, having kids in a closed environment with a fixed amount of space. That you don't necessarily have to be like, well, we'll just sweep through and kill people every once in a while. You know, like it's 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 such a weird like that's why he's not sympathetic, right? And it's weird that that uh, Chris Evans' character would even consider, you know taking the train and in, in, in that sense. And then, uh, and the whole thing with, you know, he knows the other guy. Do you, how, do you believe him? Do you think Ed Harris's character was lying that he knows the old guy from the back of the train? I mean, I think he gave a, a to me, he gave enough of information that he probably knew the guy somewhat, but I'm not sure on a level of what he was saying. I, 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 I think I completely more more or less bought. I don't think it's a really great plot point and really great for the film, but I did buy the whole he's the one sending the message back on the food type deal because they even no, mention it like yeah because they they even mention it like you know we don't know where the message is coming from when they get to the the food place where they put it in and right you know so I I, I can buy that he probably knew at least of the guy maybe not directly but he was he definitely knew enough to manipulate him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. It, it's such a harebrained idea from the supposed genius <laughs> to to basically allow. Uh, basically, it's the same plot as uh, Matrix Revolutions. Yeah. Yep. And allow them to break free every once in a while. Yeah. And you know, just handle it. And, and then we call them. Yeah, and it's like, well, actually, you just needed to do what you did anyway, which is send guys down there with guns and call them. Like, it's, you don't have to sacrifice any of the infrastructure to do so. Right. Yeah, it's pretty harebrained to accomplish the goal of, oh, we need to kill off 76%. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We have guns. They don't have guns. <laughs> yeah. It, or we can I, just, I, you know, unhook the car. I mean, you have control of the entire food supply, air supply, water supply. If you need, you could, man, there's a, so many out. more sinister yeah. ways. There's so many more gentler yet sinister ways to do it. Slowly introduce uh, uh, poison into the rations for certain sections of the, because uh, it's not, I, I understand it's not just about the end car, right? Like the calling needs to be of the middle and partially upper class citizens. And that's why they let population the- Population control. You know, exactly. They, they, let, they let the system- that's why yeah, they, they, the revolutions happen every once in a while. Exactly, because it kills some of the middle class because they get up through the cars a little bit. But it's like, uh, it's such a weird. That's a weird. It's almost mechanism. it's almost unimaginative. That's the weird. Yeah. That's the weird part about it. It's like it's it's almost like no imagination at all about how you could go about doing this without with with some level of. I don't know. And I'm sound, I'm sounding like a freaking maniac right now. Cause I'm like trying no, to envision a better right. way. <laughs> it's no, it's, it's, it's like my, you know, in, in software development, it's like my first attempt at a problem. Right. That's what this felt like. It yeah. Felt that's like what his first like. attempt at a problem. And there was no one around to review it and say, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and he's like, this is a really good solution guys. Or it's like when uh pop stars get older and they're like very well established and they put out a new album really late in life. And everybody's like, oh, that's super good. And then it's not. <laughs> it, it usually isn't at all. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't. So, like, I think that's what frustrates me is that, like, there's several points in the system that I just, when I think about it, I go, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And no one would do it this way. 
Like you just, you wouldn't be able to actually control the train if you did it this way. And that's, yeah. And it always kind of takes me out of the movie a little bit. The problem is I do like what the movie puts on screen. I think the visuals, I think the cinematography, I think keeping like you never, you always kind of know which direction they're, they always travel in the same direction on screen. Um, when they're traveling uh, towards the front of the train, they never flip that to the other side so that you're always going left to right. You're never going right to left. The characters are always moving the same direction. It's a, there's some really cool aspects of it. Some of the fight choreography and the, and the fight scenes and how they move the camera and how they slow things down and pick stuff up. I think the the tunnel fight was was actually really good. Yeah. The ax fights were really great. Um, I think independently, some of these things are really, really interesting and really nice. I just think it doesn't help the story. Yep. I agree. But that's just my take on it. No, I and I think your take is a good take, in all honesty. I think we're all agree- in agreement on on most of it that, you know, it had a lot of good. There's a lot of good here. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of amazing things happened here. It just it fell short in a few spots that made it maybe not as satisfying as maybe I or you would have wanted. And and I've even though I do like this movie, I've always felt that kind of little bit of satisfaction of 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 the ending that just always left me a little cold and stuff and i hate it I, you know i i've watched a couple of movies on netflix lately where i was enjoying there was that uh anna kendrick movie that just came out on netflix and it i loved that show in almost through the whole movie and then i just i just wasn't a fan of the ending yeah it kind of left me a little bit you know wanting more yeah, and I and that's what this one felt to me. It just I just felt wanting more a little bit. Yeah, I I think we can easily wrap up this podcast. I think so too. With Crit's comment <laughs> on this is a science fiction blue ball movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that comment. That was a great comment. <laughs> uh, I is, think this so was too. a nice date. See you Lamar. You know, see you later. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and well, then it ghosts you. I'm in a ghost yeah. shit. Well, if uh, does anybody else have anything else to add? No, nope. uh, that's all so I, I got. We have hashed this one to death. All right, let's go to ratings. Um, I will go first. And we'll go crit, and then John, since you're the last one giving us our movies for next week, John. Uh, okay. I'm gonna give this a. I'm gonna give this one a, a, a seven out of ten. Uh, bugs of protein bricks. Um, I again love this movie. Um, I, I, it just, I just felt like it lacked a little bit. Um, I would buy this movie, even though I'm giving it a seven. I mean, uh, it's an enjoyable rewatch, but I just want a little more. I was going to say yeah. something super dirty. Okay. Well, don't. This is a family friendly. <laughs> this is not a family friendly podcast. It's a somewhat friendly podcast. I'm going to keep it be somewhat of a rating here. Yeah, check well, back for the unrated director's cut of this. Podcast. Can't wait to some, <laughs> My some kids kid definitely goes, listen to these. <laughs> well, uh, when they okay. ask you later what I mean by blue balls, you can apologize for me. No, no, no just don't show them a picture of a blue basketball. Okay, there like, you go. You know, yeah. We don't need to keep it that clean. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll give this a six out of eleven. Uh, crickets, cricket bars, cricket bars, do you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would not I, I, watch this with my. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Go. Um, I would not watch this with my mom because I would force her to watch the series instead. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I wonder if it'll be similar to the relationship between the Watchmen and the the TV series, Watchmen, the, the TV Watchmen, series, which, which was so much amazing. Better. Yeah, really. Yeah, the series oh, yeah. was even better. The, than the, the series movie. is amazing. I mean, we won't. I, I want to get the Watchmen, the movie on the podcast at some point in time. So I won't say much about it, but sure. Um, yeah. The, the series is amazing. Yeah, you keep telling me fantastic. that. I just, I haven't seen it. I've got to watch it sometime. <laughs> you know, we might, I, might start I, on I, Thursday I, nights I binge or watched it. I watched the first episode with no intention of binging it. And yeah. I texted crit after I was done. I was like, what the hell is this show? <laughs> and then, and then I basically me. live. Yeah. I live yeah. tweeted the rest of my watching to crit. 
Yeah. <laughs> I distinctly remember him telling me about that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, somebody's got to enjoy it with me. Right. Yep. I'm not watching with my mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, John. All right. Uh, utopian or dystopian movies man what is your choices you're going to give us this week for this monthly this genre this month okay number one someone needs a little more head and shoulders okay number two and i would bike 500 miles and i would bike 500 more (laughs) okay (laughs) and number three a movie about redheads (laughs) all this movie needs is butter and some claw crackers Okay. Wow. The first one kind of turned me on a little bit. Because yeah, it said head and shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right. Let's go with the first one then. Oh, you didn't even fight me. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fight you. <laughs> okay. I must say I'm a little disappointed, but not too disappointed. Hey, well, dang, I'm picking these. two then. No, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, okay, are we? Are, are We're we going with number we one. one. We're going with number one. Okay. All right. All this movie needs is butter and claw crackers. Is the lobster with Colin Farrell? Oh my oh, goodness! Yeah. Okay. That's a crazy. Uh, <laughs> I almost picked that for one of my rom com ones because it's kind of a rom com, but it fits uh, a lot better in the dystopian. Yes. That is a ridiculous rom com, dude. <laughs> It, okay. it would have been it would have been a little bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah. It's a very dry. I think that humor. was more of a stretch than her. Uh, <laughs> no, probably the same. This one actually had pretty funny jokes. I, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so what's okay. the next one? Uh, and I would bike 500 miles, and I would bike 500 more. Now this one's interesting. If you'd chosen it and didn't like it, I had an alternate. Um, but this one was 15 million merits, and it was actually. Um, from Black Mirror season one, episode two. That's wow, not I a never movie. Heard of it before. It's not a movie, it's but a t- it was the TV show. Are we yes, getting TV shows in here? That's why I had the alternate. Okay. I didn't want to give it away and say, "Hey, would you guys be okay with this?" And then you know, give away the 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 whole thing. So that's why I had an alternate backed up. If you you know really didn't want to. Yeah, we'll have to, to we'll have to discuss if if TV shows can even be a part because like it's it's. Yeah, it's an anthology, so you could probably get and, away and with that's, that. And that's that's the but, only reason I brought that one up was yeah. it was an anthology. If Fair it was enough. an actual TV series with any kind of continuity, I would have been like, nah, not, yeah, not, not having it. Okay, but where it's yeah, all like standalone. <laughs> well, we didn't pick that one. <laughs> no, and and it's and it's a long. I mean, it's a fifty minute runtime, so it's not too bad. Okay, so okay. someone needs more head and shoulders. Uh, I actually pulled one of Josh's movies last week, and that's Gattaca. Oh, okay. sweet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I was going to I was going to do the title as the DNA base pair opposites of G A T T A C A, um but I figured that'd be too obvious. Yeah, it's a little obvious after last okay. week. Okay. You need more I'm space. not even upset a little bit that you just did that. And stuff. Well, yeah, you got your you got two of your picks out for this month, so that, yeah, of course you're happy. <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> and I didn't think we'd have any issues if I brought up movies we'd already had picks. No, there's before, that's no so. issue because that's going to no happen. That, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm All surprised right. it hasn't happened more to be honest with you. Well, I think we've been I know I have been like trying not to pick stuff that we've already picked before even Same if we didn't here. watch it, but yeah. I have two. Uh, that's why I haven't gone back and picked it. There's still a lot of movies out there, so <laughs> I'm very excited about this guys <laughs> yep. uh, i was thinking about watching this movie anyway because <laughs> it, it got brought to my attention again i haven't seen it for about i don't know it's been at least five to ten years so mm-hmm. i'm surprised i don't own it but i don't oh <gasps> spoilers <laughs> yeah oh uh, well guys it's been a good podcast i think it was a good movie overall and uh I appreciate everything uh, you guys said here. And uh, thanks for everybody out there in uh, Nerd Nation land for supporting us and watching our our uh, our podcasts. And as always, may you be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from all of us here at Josh's House of Nerd. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. For more nerdy awesomeness, 
Please like and subscribe and check out our other nerdy videos.